and viewers, welcome to lesson 2, science class 7, soil, inorganic fertilizers. Inorganic fertilizers, I, you can also call them chemicals. They are chemicals because they must be prepared in factories for us to buy them or purchase them and then we use them as fertilizers in our sample. So, we have um, two types of inorganic fertilizers. We have straight fertilizers and compound fertilizers. So, they, we name them into that category based on the macronutrients they possess. When you talk about macronutrients, we are basing on NPK. This one for nitrogen, this one for nitrogen, this one for uh, phosphorus, phosphorus, and then this one for potassium. Potassium. So, generally, always name inorganic fertilizers basing on these three macronutrients. Now, straight fertilizers, they have only one of these. They either have nitrogen or phosphorus or potassium. They cannot have both or all of them. Only one. Straight fertilizers. But compound fertilizers, they have a combined of these. They can either have two or all of them, as we are going to look at all them. Now let's begin by looking at straight fertilizers. As I've just said, straight fertilizers, they contain only one of the major macronutrients either nitrogen, phosphorus, or potassium. We have also types of straight fertilizers. We have number one, nitrogenous fertilizers. From the word nitrogenous, these are fertilizers that contain nitrogen. They have got only nitrogen. And remember, nitrogen is one of the macronutrients. And because it has only nitrogen, that's what we term it as straight fertilizers. So let's look at examples of nitrogenous fertilizers. We can have still here some examples of nitrogenous fertilizers. We have got what you call urea. This one, I think most of our parents or you yourself, you have ever come about the word urea. That one is a nitrogenous fertilizer. We have what you call Ammonium sulfate. We have ammonium sulfate. We have ammonium. We have ammonium nitrate as another nitrogenous fertilizer. We have. We have also what you call ammonium phosphate and so on and so forth. So those are examples of nitrogenous fertilizers. You can go in a nearby agrovet and just inquire and see whether we have one in that particular shop. We have straight fertilizer number two, known as phosphatic fertilizers. From the word phosphatic, these are straight fertilizers that have got only phosphorus as one of the major macronutrients. So examples of phosphatic fertilizers, examples of phosphatic fertilizers, we have calcium phosphate, calcium phosphate, we have calcium phosphate, we have bone meal, we have bone meal, we have single superphosphate, we have double superphosphate, then we have triple superphosphate, and Lastly, we have what we call rock phosphate. I understand that sometimes these terms are hard to pronounce them or they might discourage you on how you can identify them. But you have to know one, two, three of them so that it can help you in exam. So these are examples of uh, phosphatic fertilizers as one of the straight fertilizers. Calcium phosphate. Born meal, single superphosphate, double superphosphate, 
triple super faucet and round faucets. That is an example of uh, for static fertilizers. Now we have the last type of set fertilizers called potassium fertilizers. From the word potassium, these are straight fertilizers that has got potassium as the only macronutrients. As potassium as the only macronutrients. So let's look at the examples of potassium fertilizers. We have number one, we have what we call potassium, potassium sulfate. Potassium sulfate, sometimes we call it sulfate of potash. Sulfate of potash as the first example of potassium fertilizers, potassium sulfate or sulfate of potash. We have number two, number two, potassium chloride. Potassium chloride, sometimes we call it murate of potash. Murate of potash. Murate of potash. And lastly, we have potassium nitrate. Potassium nitrate. As examples of potassium fertilizers today. Examples of potassium fertilizers. So we are done with our straight fertilizers. That is the general fertilizers, phosphate of uh, phosphate fertilizers, and potassium fertilizers. Now let's look at compound fertilizers. As I've just mentioned, my dear learners, is that from the word compound, unlike straight fertilizers, compound have got either two or all of the three of major macronutrients. The macronutrient is NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So the compound means it has either two or all of them. So let us look at examples, examples of compound fertilizers. Examples of compound fertilizers we have number one, diammonium, diammonium phosphate, diammonium phosphate, DAP, DAP, diammonium phosphate. Ammonium is a compound of nitrogen, and you have phosphate, phosphorus, which means it has nitrogen and phosphorus. That's what we call compound fertilizers. Number two, number two, we have what we call mono, ammonium, monoammonium phosphate. Monoammonium phosphate, commonly known as MAP. Monoammonium phosphate, commonly known as MAP. Then number three, we have what we call nitrogen, Nitrogen, phosphorus, phosphorus, and potassium fertilizers, commonly known as NPK. So, in other words, when I talk about compound fertilizers, when you get an examination, you have to base on three of this BFP, the ammonia phosphate, MA. Monoammonium phosphate or NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So, in this inorganic fertilizers or chemicals, it has one major characteristic is that they provide what we call specific nutrients. Specific nutrient meaning, if you go and weigh or investigate the type of soil you have, the type of soil fertility you have. You, if you realize your soil doesn't have nitrogen, then you use the general fertilizers. If it doesn't have phosphorus, you use phosphate fertilizers and so on and so forth. And that's why I say, inorganic fertilizers has a major characteristic in that we use it to provide specific nutrients in the soil. And then inorganic fertilizers are found in a group of farm chemicals. 
Remember, we only use little amount of inorganic fertilizers to supplement soil fertility. If it happens to use excessive of it, then you pollute the soil. You will not be helping the plant, neither that particular soil. We will rather be polluting the soil. You will what you call using excess farm chemicals. When we talk about excess farm chemicals, organic fertilizers fertilizer is one of them. Before you get others, others like pesticides and herbicides. So these inorganic fertilizers, you have to use very small amount of them. Another thing is that inorganic fertilizers, they have what you call burning sensation. You have to wear what you call protective clothing before you use it in the summer. Protective clothing, I mean uh, goggles, aprons, gun boots, gloves, and so on and so forth. Because of the burning sensation. Burning sensation means when you hold these fertilizers using your bare hands, then you have something known as blisters. And that, that means they will burn your hands. There are also poisonous, so keep away from the children. And then another thing about these uh, compact fertilizers is that uh, inorganic fertilizers, I mean, they are very, very expensive. Purchasing them and using them is actually very, very expensive. And like uh, organic fertilizers that uh, we looked at, you can also prepare it for your own. Now, as I wind up, there is an exercise here. Name two types of straight fertilizers. Here, straight fertilizers. We have them here, I just mentioned them here. And one of them, name two types of straight fertilizers. One of them is nitrogenous. What are the two others? Several examples of phosphatic fertilizers I have given you. Fertilizers with more than one macronutrient is gold, ash, I have given you. Then two examples of compound fertilizers. And then lastly, set five advantages of fertilizers and manures. These advantages and disadvantages, you can get them from primary science people's book class seven. You can get them from the last page that are well highlighted there. And then you can add on what you already know about soil. Thank you very much. That's all we can cover about soil in class seven. I have handled all the major parts. Thank you very much and let's meet the next.